the Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015. Brought to you by Marantis. Now your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for theCUBE. This is our flagship program from SiliconANGLE Media, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with Lachlan Everts, Evans, Evanson, uh, team lead cloud and platform engineering at Lithium, and Joe Sandoval, director of the cloud platform. Welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank you. Uh, Lithium, great company, been following for a while. Um, doing really well, but grew out of the forum software. Now you guys are doing community software, advocate software, whatever they call it these days. There's always a buzzword for it, but basically yeah. you guys are powering software for the largest enterprises out there for you know, community, social data, uh, interactions, mm -hmm. persona, for yeah. folks who are driving blogs and marketing and all that stuff for companies. Customer yeah. advocacy, did I get that right? Yes, yeah. get absolutely. That right? Okay, no, good. We connecting you know, companies with customers. Engagement data, so yeah. all this stuff is awesome. So we talk to the big players like uh, Bob Picciano, who's SVP at IBM, reports to the CEO, and he talks about systems of record, systems of uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. This is the hottest thing in the planet right now, systems of engagement. But there's a little nuance. Mm -hmm. It has to be real time. It has to be fresh, yeah. not stale. So cloud can be a real opportunity. So how are you guys deploying cloud at Lithium you guys do some very interesting things around hybrid, public and private. Mm -hmm. Share with what's happening with your deployments. What are some of the things going on? And how are you guys tackling this? You have business right now that you're doing with large customers. Yes. And you sell software as a license and probably some other SaaS products. Yes. Yep. Multi-tenancy, <laughs> performance, real time. Mm -hmm. You guys are in the wheelhouse of all the, all the hot action. So what's going on? Yeah, no, we, um, you know, Lithium, I mean, it, you know, it's all the things that you described. I mean, there's, there's definitely some challenges, you know, as we're, as we're trying to scale. I mean, I think it's a lot of the same things that, you know, other, other people in like operations are kind of dealing with. Um, but we definitely have really, you know, taken an approach where, um, you know, there's, as, as the cloud space has matured, uh, we really wanted to be able to kind of leverage, like we, kn we knew what our use cases were, and we wanted to be able to, you know, leverage, you know, public cloud as a vehicle to really, you know, help you know, drive forward and, and move quickly. Um, but as well as like we had, you know, some of our product evolving in the, in the data center that, you know, we, we understood that private cloud, you know, OpenStack was a way that could help us to be able to transform and really, you know, enable our devs and be able to provide that self-service platform. So we kind of took in a really like, let's really take kind of like the best of both worlds and like try to leverage like what, you know, what is leading in public and as well as what, what's leading in, in private cloud in the data center. So you guys got some cutting edge DevOps going on, right? And, yeah. and I've been asking every guest on the uh, program here yesterday and today, uh, and I'll ask you guys to answer individually, does hybrid cloud really exist? And if it is, is it a product or is it, or is it just <laughs> a combination of public and private? Because you guys are doing both Amazon and OpenStack, mm -hmm. which is essentially, you could argue, is hybrid cloud, but yeah. you don't buy hybrid cloud, you engineer hybrid cloud, right. I, I'm guessing. But what's your take on it? Does hybrid cloud exist? Is that a marketing buzzword in your mind? Is it an outcome? Is it like distributed computing? Yeah. What's your take? Sure, well, you know, I mean, I know, I know early on when I got into like this OpenStack journey, um, there was a lot of marketing stuff around it. I mean, there's a lot of like messages about like, hey, you could cloud burst. You could kind of get out there and you know use use you know use Amazon as a way to kind of burst and deal with those spikes. Um, really, when we started really getting into it and started kind of understanding some of the challenges there, I think we really started we step stepped away and just realized that each one has a really specific use case for us. And it was like let's let's use the right tool at the right time is how we kind of looked at it. So. Yes, we, we are taking kind of a hybrid approach. We will use both and we are constantly evaluating like, you know, because we're very data driven and we want to make sure that, um, you know, we're very efficient in regards to like, you know, is, if it makes more sense for us to lean more towards public cloud, we will. We will allow ourselves to kind of like leverage that. So I, I think it's really more of that, uh, for anybody in, in operations that you should really take a really holistic look at it, you know, like that public, pla that public cloud platform is strong. Um, but, you know, as far as like for us, we, we just felt that, it, it, it's just something that we had to be very discreet about, like where we decided mm -hmm. to deploy stuff. Yeah. But you engineered that. That's you. Yeah. Since yeah. you have a, yes. since you hybrid cloud now. Yeah. Yes. But if you want to call it that, it means hybrid. It's a little public, a little private. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think one of the things to add to what Joe's saying, I think it's really picked up again with the introduction of containers. And if you actually see what Solomon Hike said, 
you know, you extract the platform. So each of these platforms have different idiosyncrasies and different ways to provide network compute and storage. But when you actually overlay containers on top of them, it levels the playing field and you're no longer worried about the platform. So things like hybrid cloud and moving workloads, when you really look at a hybrid cloud, is it bursting? Is it having workloads running in both? Is it, uh, you know, having workloads that can be moved from one to the other? I think the container story actually picks it up a notch again and allows you a single pane of glass with things like Kubernetes to actually span multiple clouds. So orchestration is really key there. Yes. The developer framework with Docker yes. enables you now to have that traversal, if you will, between yeah. the two environments. Yes. How does that change your cost perspective? I mean, obviously, Amazon, some say is more expensive as you get bigger in it, but then you want to bring it to private. Some people have, have been all in on Amazon, then brought it on premise, and mm -hmm. then go back to Amazon. Some have hybrid like you guys. Do you guys find an advantage of having the hybrid? Does it help you guys from a workload standpoint, performance yeah. and cost, or one or the other, or both? Or can you guys share some insight on that? I mean, that's that's kind of been a really evolving thing for us. I mean, because we, we, we wrestled with that 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 constant, you know, um, you know, my boss has done a great job at really like, he crunches the numbers and you know, constantly challenges me of like, you know, like, hey, I think we, we our, our arc is this direction, or maybe going back this direction, depending on like the size. Um, but one of the like the biggest gating factors that I found on like this journey was just a lot of the tooling around it was was really that limiting factor. Like we weren't even ready for that discussion. So that's kind of where I was kind of pushing back. It's like in, until we started seeing the emergence of like containers and Docker, where we then I was like, wow, this hybrid vision that we kind of like thought about, where then we really could yeah. allow ourselves to kind of leverage like one's being cheaper yeah. than the other. It, it provided that that platform to, to give us that. You know, I think about your business a lot because we have the CrowdChat uh, mm -hmm. container. I showed you guys that last night, the analytics. And it's all built in Amazon, it's all in the cloud, it's all real time. Sure. And, and you guys have a different business model in the sense that you're doing a lot of enterprises where it's a license and they have their own data. So, um, and I know a couple of your board members, Pete Sonsini and Peter Fenton, both are like, do more, do more, larger scale. So you guys are actually setting up pretty nicely from a scale standpoint. Yeah. But now you got to get into the kind of competitive advantage strategy of saying, okay, I have a customer called Big Enterprise, they have their community data, it's their advocates, it's their influencers, it's their customers. They don't want that customer data in the main cloud, maybe not, mm -hmm. but you might want to run real-time analytics with cloud or whatnot, you have cloud, some other cool things at Lithium. Right. So do you find that flexibility to be one of the driving factors, or is it just, you're looking at it from a pure futuristic standpoint? Do you guys actually have those conversations like, hey, we have to mine the multi-tenancy issue. Sure. And yeah. do you do that yeah. on public, or do you do that on private? So these are the kind of the nuances that you guys face as a cutting edge platform. So is that a conversation or is that just more of a future scenario? I mean, I, I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, us being able to kind of have that, that have that choice really gives us flexibility with our customers and, you know, having, you know, like that, knowing that we have multi-tenancy and that we want to make sure that we secure and isolate and that's right. kind of what, Having you probably want to do that on private cloud, right? And Absolutely. that's that's exactly what like OpenStack kind of gives. We can we can do that. So you know, depending on like our business requirements or or things that go, you know, I mean, yes, we don't really think so much on that level as much. But we but it is considerations that we had like all our decision making. We want to like have that ability where we have that choice to be able to move data in, internally where that's the driving factor. And we're seeing a lot of companies, I mean, I'm only can imagine the scenario because I talked to a lot of other companies where they say, hey, you know what, I got the on-prem thing or private cloud because right. we have business issues, sure. whether it's multi-tenancy, customer data, com some compliance thing. Mm -hmm. But then they say, hey, I can go into Amazon and spin up basically a mainframe like functionality, yeah. massive compute to do some analytics, to do some things yes. in real time. Yes. So this is the kind of the new way we're kind of hearing hybrid being discussed. Yeah, yeah, agree. Are we there yet? I mean, you guys are the, probably one of the most advanced we've talked to with this hybrid. How do you how do you see that? Is that a nirvana or is it we close or? Sure, it's, uh, I mean, it's an interesting proposition and if you take a look at all these container orchestration environments, what they actually do is schedule resources and maybe they are Hadoop jobs, maybe they're, you're, production workloads. Um, but the real secret source in there is if you know where your resources are and how they're running, you can schedule around them. And, and traditionally, you know, you build infrastructure to run Hadoop and you build infrastructure to run your cloud and they've always been segregated. But with the container uh, paradigm and looking at container orchestration, we can actually say, where are these workloads running? Where have we got free cycles? Run your Hadoop workloads in those free cycles or schedule them at th them at these time but you actually bring them into a common infrastructure. So, you know, you have yeah. a lot more leverage of this larger resource pool than smaller discrete resource pools. So it becomes a lot more opportunity. I'm sure you can reduce cost too. I mean, you don't need a lot more sysadmins, probably reduce personnel count if you're going to be orchestrating that level of workload management. It's yeah. almost like push button 
IT. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's those are the you know the, the net gains that we get is that you know the you know the team is able to be able to you know scale out large you know into a larger infrastructure, but without like increasing the headcount. I mean, we want to stay you know very efficient and optimal. Okay, so here's the real most important question I want to ask. So, is there a way I can jump my cloud score up? <laughs> can you guys go in and database and move me from a 66 to a 89? I. I think you best ask Justin Bieber because I think he still holds the highest cloud score. So if you can get a response from him, just tweet him, I'll show you get a response. Okay, I'm sure you guys probably might not. If you can't answer this question, it's okay to say I can't answer it. But a lot of people are saying you know, cloud scores represent just frequency, how many times you tweet, and influencers are a big thing right now. now you guys have probably the most comprehensive software in the influencer because market because you have customers that run their advocacy programs sure. on lithium. He's the number one, I think the number one vendor in that space right now. So as the world moves into the crowd, as the world's into Twitter and multiple platforms, influence has context. Sure. How do you guys look at that? Is that in your department? You guys yeah, look that's, at that? I mean, that's, you know, if you want to talk DevOps, you want to talk cloud, I mean, those are things I could talk yeah, all day. That's a little bit outside of my realm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk DevOps then, okay. Just want to get out there, so I'm uh, follow up on that with the Lithium folks. Um, DevOps. Mm -hmm. So Amazon has Elastic Beanstalk, great products, doing sure. well. Um, is there alternatives out there on the private cloud that Beanstalk could be there? And on the database side, DynamoDB on Amazon's pretty solid. You got mm -hmm. Beanstalk, got Redis and normal stuff in there. Is OpenStack ready for prime time in that kind of container model, application container, or is that going to be a Docker or is it homegrown? I, I, well, you know, I, what I'm seeing is like, you know, like even, even for us is, you know, yeah, Amazon has like just a great set of services. We, we, we I mean, we feel, like, hey, it's, it's a great platform to be using. Honestly, I mean, if I had to give you know advice to like my peers and people like making this journey, you know, I would really encourage them like, you know, use public cloud. If you have no no gating factors, meaning you don't have to have data residency in the data center or yeah. these factors, you know, use those platforms. Um, but you know, for you know, for us as well, like when we get when we start bringing things back into OpenStack, um, you know, it kind of like also, I think we we wanted to, to not be so vendor locked as well. We wanted to be able to have some choice that. Well, you have business uh, criteria that you have to ma have mandated. Yes, I mean you got data well. governance problem. Each you know, all these customers you have. You know, yeah. definitely customers in EMEA. You know, we have to, there's considerations there, and who knows how these things are going to change. And so at least yeah. us having that competency that we know that we've kind of made that journey. Now we're in a position to really you know pivot quickly when as as needed, depending on like business. Okay, so what are you guys locking your teeth into right now on OpenStack? Because OpenStack is growing fast. We've seen some successes here. Mm -hmm. You guys are certainly a great case study here in terms of folks on the trenches, front lines, doing some sure. great work. What are you guys sinking your teeth in now? What's, what's, what are you guys working on now? What's the next step for you guys on, in your DevOps, OpenStack, private cloud, hybrid cloud rollouts? Yeah, sure. I, so, you know, being in the container journey right now, so we're on the forefront, we're focusing on uh, leveraging the platform we've built in OpenStack and, and using that as shoulders to build our container platform. So, you know, we're heavily looking at containers and how we can utilize OpenStack and the frameworks it provides to make a great container experience for our developers, which are our customers. And how about your internal developers? Uh, and they're using OpenStack and Amazon? Yeah, so we have, you know, like depending on like what, what, what part of the product it is, um, we have some using Amazon, some using OpenStack. Um, a lot of times, you know, depending on like where we're at with like, because we, we tend to run very, you know, efficient. Um, so we find that, you know, hey, Amazon's a great place to like kickstart a new project, a new service, and then we could decide later, maybe at times that it may need to roll back into this, the data center. As well as like, you know, as our markets expand, you know, we like that there's, there's a way that we have two, you know, we have some key data centers in, in place. There may be other regions that emerge where we can really, now that we have kind of a framework to kind of like jumpstart an AWS, or we have a template really to get going with OpenStack, that you know, we may not have to build another data center. So we like that that we have that as an yeah. option. It's great flexibility too. You guys have a competitive advantage now. Yeah. To, to spin up new new apps, new functionality. Yeah. Yeah. And get close to our customers. All right. And final question: You guys kicking the tires on Kubernetes at all? Um, looking at the orchestration side, you mm -hmm. guys using Kubernetes? Absolutely. Yeah. I just gave a presentation on how we're using Kubernetes and and how we're utilizing it with OpenStack. So I'm excited to see how that project goes. But you know, we're on a path to working heavily with Kubernetes. And your take on Kubernetes, positive, negative, neutral? Oh, absolutely positive, yes. In, in the three months that I've been working with it, it's absolutely been fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well guys, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thanks for the insight, congratulations. Thank you, Lithium, a hot, hot comp growing company in San Francisco, powering a lot of the community's advocate software out there. This is theCUBE, powering the data and the signal here at OpenStack Silicon Valley. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>